Hi, welcome back to Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit. In this video, we're going to take a look at this Mountfield Emperor petrol lawnmower. This thing is massive and it weighs an absolute ton. So the reason I'm stood in my garage really just at the minute is because the wind's so strong again for like the third weekend in a row that I don't know if you'll hear what I'm saying on the camera, but this is a Mountfield Emperor lawnmower. We'll go outside and have a look at it in a minute and I'll just film around and probably not say too much because of the wind, but it's massive. I had to get someone to help me lift this in the car and out at the other end. I think it's probably the heaviest lawnmower I've ever had. So let's take a step outside while this wind's died down. This has got a Briggs & Stratton Magnetron engine. I presume that's referring to the uh, starting. Probably ain't got a, an ignition coil on it, but it's filthy. Don't think it's been run for, uh, well, it looks like it's from 1975, doesn't it? Let's, let's just take a guess that it hasn't been run for at least 10 years. So this is going to be good fun. And I don't know how to really explain how, how, how big it is. Let's just get this out of here. This is just ridiculous. It's like that look. That's probably a better, a better visual guide, isn't it? It's massive. Um, I don't really know who's going to want to buy it, to be honest with you. But we are going to try and get it running. But before I do anything else with this, I'm actually going to clean this off first. So, I'll just film this sticker here. Apologies for the wind as I said I can't. So yeah. I had an Empress a few weeks ago, I'll link to that video in the top right hand corner now and the Empress struck back, but in this one I think the Emperor really is going to strike back. So while I've got my pressure washer set up, I've just been doing another mower, I'm going to actually just give this a clean off, I'll tip it against my fence on my bench there and I'll do the underside of it and take a look at that as well and this grass box, I mean look at the width of that. So this might take some selling but it's got a rear roller on. Um, I really hope it's got a self-drive on, but I'm not so sure it has to be honest with you. There's a lever there which may be for a self-drive, because I might not have had the actual um, dead man's handle on in the uh, 1940s. So let's see, I'm going to clean it off, we'll probably bring this in the garage and have a look at it after we've tried to start it. So it really is blowing again, it sounds like the garage roof's going to come off, so I'm going to give this a bit of a clean off. Again, apologies for filming from inside here, but it's impossible to film outside, but I am going to do something that's kind of pointless. I'm going to put some fuel in this, and I'm going to try and start it. Um, I don't think for one second it'll start, but let's see. It tips up, it's got water all over it. It's not been run for years, so... Right, this could be fun. Let's try this. Wouldn't it be funny if it started? Right. There's a choke at the top. Get 
have the pull, it was an absolute tub. Oh! 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 Ah, that was awful. You know when your hands are freezing and that happens. I mean the pull cord handle is like an inch long. Right. I just I have to just give you my thoughts on that. Apart from nearly ripping my arm off, which I'm sure was highly amusing to a lot of people. My hands are freezing. The pull cord thing at the end is like an inch wide, so you can't get hold of it properly. And to pull it over, it feels like you kind of... You know when you watch World's Strongest Man and they're trying to pull them trucks along? Anyway, let's give it another go. Right, so I'll be brave, I'll give this one more go. Uh, Strike back. It's not self drive on as well. I can't believe it. The rear roller self drive works. Oh, wow. Come with me. I need to lift it up a little bit so I'll stop it in a minute and lift it but look at that, I mean that's brilliant isn't it what a great spot I can't show if I mentioned this I swapped this with a friend of mine for a, for a dartboard last night so I can't believe it's got self drive on that works that's amazing I'm just going to stop that. That's absolutely brilliant. That's the most fun I've had in ages with these. Brilliant. So um, I'm just going to lift it up a bit because it's really a bit too low to the ground. This actual height lever is right at the bottom. So I'll have to have a look at that. Would you believe it? I mean, it just goes to show, doesn't it? You know, how they used to build these things. That's amazing. I can't even imagine how long it is since that's been running. And I get these things here, these little RS100s and these SV150s you have to mess about for an hour with. You grab this out of someone's shed from 30 years ago and put some fuel in it and off we go. Absolutely brilliant.
leave me a comment in the comments section tell me what you thought of that right so I'm obviously well happy with that I can't even remember if I told you I said it was a good swap I had a dartboard on the last video near the door in here it was on the floor in a wooden case I actually swapped the dartboard last night with a friend of mine for this lawnmower and we were both happy with the trade so he's got a nice dartboard and I've got a nice lawnmower so I'm super happy with that I'm really uh, that's amazing isn't it you know you would not believe that that would have started would you so I don't know what to do with it now I mean I could just sell that I could say yeah start some runs self drive works stick it on I don't know what I'll get for it might do I might take some bits off it so I'm going to go and have a cup of tea and make myself a sandwich and I'll think about it so don't go away stick around and we'll see what we do next right so I've just been having a looking around this emperor lawnmower and as you can see or you did see it runs okay now this is a massive engine I'm not sure what magnetron is, maybe it's when they just changed it over from points and actually put a, like a magneto on which we all know is a, an ignition coil but anyway I think what I'm going to do with this, even though it's massive is I'm going to unbolt this engine from here if I can and try and drop it on the bench here maybe just drop the uh, actual shaft through that hole and have a real good look under these covers but the main problem I've got is it doesn't stay at the correct height, this height lever's all wonky and it moves about and whichever one you kind of put it at it just drops back down the whole thing just drops back down like that so I think what, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to actually tip it by pushing it down like this with a handle like that as you can see there but it's because it's really really heavy as well I'm going to try and get the blade off underneath and actually unbolt the engine take it off so I can turn it over and I can have a look at the underside and see uh, how these connections all work on these levers. I'm not sure if I'll be able to fix it or not but um, just for now I'm going to see if I can get this engine off so I'll start by attempting to remove the spark plug here we don't know how long that's been in there so this could take a little bit of getting off sometimes if I'm honest with you I'll just put my foot on there like that and it helps me get these off so probably not the best way of doing it but it's worked I'm not really going to damage anything I'm going to take that out, then there can be no accidents, and that's black. See that there? Really dirty that. So that's out of the way. So that's just a safety thing for my benefit. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to find a way to push this backwards now with a handle on the floor and put something on to weight it so I can get in underneath it and see if we can get this blade off, see if we can get this whole engine off. So I've made use of the uh, kids' toy box. I said the spark plugs removed here and I was talking to a friend of mine online last night about this, a lad called Steve Brayshaw if you're up in the Perthshire area of Scotland he has his own uh, repair business, he does a great job and he always helps me out when I get stuck with things like that so I really appreciate that so take just take a second to have a look at his uh, actual Facebook page when you're finished here as well but he suggested this plate here underneath here you can get this plate off and you can have a good look but what I'm looking at here is all this under here, you see all this lot this certainly won't be helping. I'm just wondering whether it's worth actually taking the engine off or not. But I've got the blade here to undo. And then there's a bolt here at the top. I've got another one there and another one there. And I think I'll try and take it off. So what I'm going to do is just spray all this up a little bit with WD-40 and give it a few minutes to soak in. So I don't want to snap any of these off and I'm going to try and use an impact just to undo this engine. So I'm going to give this Ryobi a real good test out here. I'm not sure this will take this off, but I'm going to put that on there like that. I'm going to see if this is strong enough to undo this blade. As you can see, this is really stuck on. I'm going to have to get my Clark out, which is up there, the electric one. See if that's got enough power to zip this blade off. It's, as I suspected really this is going to be a, a bit of a job to get off it's just going to have been on there for years this is kind of when you then you've got a few decent tools just to have a go at this so I'm going to plug this in we'll have another go at getting this blade off I, I wanted to film that but that was an absolute pig even with this electric one I've never known anything as tight as that but eventually we'll get this undone and eventually we'll get this off and there's absolutely no way you would have done that by hand so this Clark has got the job done again so that's only twice this little Ryobi has let me down undoing these actual blade bolts which out of probably the hundreds of times I've done it with it it's done a great job 
and this Clark one's never let me down and both of these are linked in the description below this video and I didn't want to do this but I have actually used this really powerful Clark one this doesn't have adjustable torque and this one does but I've actually managed to get these actual engine bolts as you can see here I can get these off now and hopefully we can remove this engine you can see this one is just falling out of here and take that out as well and I'm going to take this last one out this engine it's probably going to slide down there, but I'm not really too bothered, so let's see what we get. I'll take that out now. And we've got those three out. Hopefully, I can lift this engine off, so... It's just all so heavy to work on this, really. Okay, so just after unbolting the engine, there's some sort of pipe, pole, metal, breather. Don't know what that is that goes through the engine, so still can't get this engine off. So, what I've just started doing under here is removing this part across here so I've got that one off there I'm just going to reach all the way under here and try and get this one I've just managed to drop that down a bit and I just want to show you under here apologies the lighting isn't brilliant but can you see this here watch this look at that lot look at all that there and that's probably why this height just is not working properly I mean, there's more there than you can even getting and it's just never ending in it look look at that lot there and this is if you go to the back here this is where the whole height of just the part is and everything so I'm going to rake all that out of there and we'll give that a good clean out hopefully you can see a bit better I've set my little light up there if we have a good look inside there let's just pull this light around with us you can probably see there even now there's loads of things in there and this is where this whole adjuster sits you can see in there that's the height adjuster, so I'm going to rake all this out. And this little part up here, there's these little serrated edges there, you can just about see. I'm hoping, with all that cleared out, this height adjuster might magically work, but I'm not holding my breath. So, the Emperor may have struck back, actually, on this occasion, because I've just looked in there, and I think, looking at this connector where it all connects together, there may be some welding that needs to go on in there, and that's not something I was set up to do, unfortunately. So... This lawnmower, um, if you remember from the beginning of the video, I actually swapped this for a dartboard and it didn't really cost me anything apart from a dartboard I didn't use. So I've got this running, starts and runs. I'm going to put the box on this. I'm going to move on to another mower. I've got loads lined up. I've just sold that. Uh, I'm going to put the box on this. I'm just going to put this on, uh, I might even put this on an eBay. See where it goes from, just put a little video on of it actually running. Because it does start and run. And if someone's not bothered about the height adjuster and they're quite happy with it at the bottom, then they might pay a decent price for this. I don't know, I'm not sure. I just want to mention these two lawnmowers. I had two of these. I had a Sovereign one and I had this Mountfield one. I paid £30 for the other one with the self-dry and I paid £18 for this one. That's £48 in total. Now I've sold that one. I wanted £75 for that. I've sold that for £65. And I sold the other one for £90, which was an incredibly good sale. I was really happy with that. So... I can't really do the maths, but I will. So I sold one for 90. I'm terrible at maths. And one for 65 that's going tomorrow. So £155 minus off 30 equals that. Minus off 18, which I paid for the other one. £107 profit from two little lawnmowers like that. So let's just knock £7 off for, say, a spark plug and a bit of oil. That's a £100 profit on two little lawnmowers like that. That probably took me, I don't know, maybe just under an hour each to do. So it's a great little small business to be in. So I'm not really too worried about spending too much time on this. I know I'll get a lot of comments in the comments section saying, oh, you big chicken, you're wasting your money and, you know, you, you should get this running and take it out and weld it. But I don't, I, I kind of have a sort of 30 minute rule now on mowers from doing these just through experience where any more than that, I'm going to have to start taking parts off this great big mower like that. I'm just going to cut my losses with that. I've done it on a video earlier this year and got a few negative comments, but when I can get two little mowers in like that and I can make a £100 profit, I don't want to spend ages tipping this upside down, trying to unbolt it all and find parts and start welding it. I just don't see the point. There's two ways of doing this, really, and neither way is wrong. You know, I, I do it the way I do it. I'm interested in getting these in quickly, flipping these round, and then just making a profit as quick as I can and just getting more in and doing simple repairs other people on other channels, they have more experience than me with things like this. They have better kit and a bit better knowledge than me than how to weld things. And they're quite happy to spend a day sort of taking that apart. And maybe they have the time to do that. And I'm, I don't frown on that either. I think it's uh, up to the individual. Personally, I'm happy of buying another one. So 
the Emperor is going to go on this occasion. I'm going to sell this. And this is a massive wide cut mower. And this is just for some sort of allotment or some wasteland at the back of somewhere. And I just want to trim this down. I might get a good amount for this. So I will update the video on this when I've sold it. So I'll probably just put this on. I could even put it on Facebook Marketplace for offers. And just put that little video on of it running. So I'm just thinking off the top of my head. So I'm not going to spend ages going through it. I'm not going to strip it all down as I was going to. So I know there will be a few people disappointed. But. It's coming up to spring shortly, and I've got loads of these I want to pick up and repair for profit. So the Emperor is going to go, I don't know where he's going to go, I'm not a Star Wars fan, I'm trying to get Star Wars little uh, puns in, but I'm not very good at that. Nothing uh, springs to mind at the minute. So, I'm not very good on codes, I know there's a few people on the, on the channel that give me a clue with this. Let's just get down here and have a better look. People like to know what year these things are, so... I don't know if you can read that code there. The end code looks like a 8412208. I'm not sure. I'm not very good at reading the codes, but I would imagine it's from the mid 80s. So I'm going to list this now, and you can just tell in this garage just how big this is. So sorry I failed you. The Emperor really did strike back, and I have been defeated. So I'm going to go to a galaxy far, far away. Thanks for watching. Be kind in the comments, and I'll see you next time.